Yo, yo. I know What's going on? Happy, 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 happy hump day. Happy hump day. Happy hump day. What's going on? Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Appreciate it. Eric, what's good? What's good, Drakey? Drake, Drake. Let's go. Let's go. <clears throat> what's the deal, Andre? How you doing? Look, Navy trying to give me another card, man. They keep sending me stuff, man. They're telling me to come get another card right now. Joshua Hudson, how do I remove a bankruptcy from my credit? <clears throat> uh, the best way to do that is to uh, put credit freezes on. Um, also, you want to write your letters in. Hopefully, you have some type of template or something you're using to uh, dispute the bankruptcy off of your report. Um, but a lot of it's going to be really just taking your time. Um, I've seen it take six months for people to do it traditionally, four months. Um, but you just have to be diligent in your letters and don't do the same exact thing every time. You got to switch it up. You got to switch it up. <clears throat> hey, hey, I got my Navy account yesterday. Word. Let's get it, Chris. You ready to get that Navy money, man? <clears throat> What the deal? What the deal? Isaac B, Majestic. What's good, Jay? I know you about to drop that knowledge. Credit plug in the building. I'm one of them. I'm not the only one. You know what I'm saying? Stay humble. You know? I know what I know. Some things I don't. Uh, but I'm always willing to learn. And I don't mind, you know, not knowing something. You know what I'm saying? That's the difference. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people try to act like they know everything about everything um but you know <clears throat> i'll let you know that you know say hey i don't know this but i'll figure it out you know what i'm saying um but even with the home equity line of credit i didn't know about that because that's not something i really uh even thought about getting I was getting a, a a heloc for short um and uh <clears throat> you know did more looking into you know P locks and you know personal lines of credit. Um, now the B locks, uh, business lines of credit. Um, I do have access to those. I will be releasing that here soon. Um, got the guy outside right now, um, out there cutting the grass and blowing stuff around right now. Good thing about where I live at is that my HOA fees include cutting my grass, raking the leaves, all that. Now, a lot of people's uh, HOAs don't include that. <laughs> That's one good thing about my HOA calls here where I'm at. <clears throat> yep, I was willing to uh, do that. Um, Ashley, you can go ahead and put my uh, my number out there, my 1-800 number, as well as the uh, phonetic version of my number. Uh, that'll be great. And go ahead and drop my email as well, if you don't mind. <clears throat> Okay. When you don't know and educate yourself um, to help us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to do that. Got to do that. <clears throat> you know, that's the, that, that's a cool thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, a lot of y'all might have kids out there. You got kids. Don't be afraid to let your kids know that you don't know something. You know what I'm saying? Because if you act like you know something all the time, then they're going to feel like it's, you know, like they're going to feel almost stupid. You know what I'm saying? They're going to feel like, yo, like. You know, <laughs> you know, mom and daddy know everything. Like I don't know nothing, and so let them know if they ask you a question, you don't know the answer. Say, look, son, you know I don't know, but I will find out. I'll figure it out. We'll figure it out together. You know, and that's just being humble and letting them know that hey, no matter how old you are, you can continue to learn, and that's how you grow. <clears throat> a lot of people out here aren't willing to learn. Uh, even in the credit industry, a lot of people aren't willing to, to learn anything because they think they know everything. 
um, you know, because of their status of, of how much money they make or, you know, whatever they, whatever the case may be, how long they've been around, you know, even people in other industries. It's just like, you know, you know, you're like you went behind the ears. I've been doing this for 40 years, 20 years or whatever. And that's why a lot of people lose their jobs because they're not willing to learn something new that could actually help production, help things, make things easier or just look at it a different way. And I've always been the kind of person where I just been, you know, humble enough to say, hey, look, Ninja, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't know. But if I don't know, I'll let you know. And I won't just be speaking outside of my neck for it to sound good like I know what I'm talking about when I really don't. You know, <clears throat> not going to do that. Let me not get behind. So up there with CJ and Will Roundtree. I'm trying to get there, man. <clears throat> um. See, what up, Jay? Columbus, Ohio, checking in. I was looking at a few of old videos, and I saw you and CJ. Um, <clears throat> are y'all partnered up? Uh, CJ, that's my dude. Like, I've known CJ before any of this credit-ish. You know what I'm saying? I've known him for, uh, shoot, I don't know. It's been eight, eight years, something like that. It's been a long, it's been a long time. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we go, we go back. We go way back. So. You know, you'll never see me speak anything negative towards him or anybody else in the industry out there as long as they're giving out, you know, information that they know that, you know, is true. My problem is there's a lot of videos out there and not that I necessarily watched. I probably watched one from a female, but um, <clears throat> I've heard about other things uh, that people saying that people said such and such, you know, this credit person said this. Is that true? And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, why do they tell you that? Like, that's not nowhere near true. And so <clears throat> I don't knock anybody who's in the industry, no matter what industry it is, but especially credit, as long as they're giving the right information. Like, if you're giving the right information, that's cool. But if you're not, that's why I tell everybody to do their own research. Like, if you're listening to me about anything I'm saying, a lot of times y'all notice for, for my viewers who watch me on a regular basis, uh, I think that's about 30 of you, 40 of you, 50 of you. Who watch me regularly, um, you know that anything I say, I back up. Like I'm not gonna just be talking about stuff and not have proof to show you about anything that I talk about. Like y'all know that for a fact. Like even with you know, it's like like, like my trading right now. Like, this is my you with my day trading. Y'all see me? I'll show my day trading. I got some pending trades right now. These are, these are not open trades; they're pending right now. And then uh, this is what I made profit for the day so far. Um, you know, in my trading account, you know, this is a real account. This ain't no, you know, fake account. So, you know, in anything I do, I'm talking about trading. I'm talking about, talk about credit. I talk about taxes. Y'all know I'm always that person to go and, you know, I show you, you know, what it is and not just be like, oh yeah, do this because Jay says so. Like, no, I'm going to do this because the IRS said this in their publication. I do this because Jay showed me how to trade my account properly. And that's why I buy and sell at this point And I get out at this point and I set my stop loss here, my take profit here because of what I've learned, not because of what he said. But based on me seeing it, I see, you know, the benefits of it. Or, you know, I, uh, I, I heard Jay say something about this line of credit and how it can help your Help your uh, help your scores and help your overall buying power. So I did some research. I looked it up and I found thousands of people who've done the same exact thing and it's worked for them. So I'm going by the whole entire um, combination of not only listening but going and doing some research and knowing, uh, finding out for myself uh, that this stuff really does, you know, help. And um, <clears throat> yeah, it's a lot of people out there, man, like a lot of people who call me on the phone. And uh, if I'm knocking you right now, it's not intentional, but I, I do want to talk to you and let you know that you're stubborn. You're stubborn. Now, if you're 40, 50, 60 years old and you don't know how to use a, a smartphone, I don't want to hear no excuses about, you know, that's the young people stuff. I just got me a flip phone. I just upgraded my daughter does that stuff. I, I call my son to do that stuff. That's no excuse. When I go to the Best Buy store, the Apple store, 
the Windows Store that I see people have a little kiosk at, at I see people at AT&T, uh, Verizon, and I'm talking about 60, 70, 80 year olds, iPhones, Androids, walking around here with Google Glasses, um, got the latest technology of, of, of headphones, got iPads, know how, and knows how to use them. So you being old doesn't give you the excuse to say you can't learn something new. It's not too late for you to learn something. It's just that mental block where you're like, yo, I don't want to take the time and effort to learn something new because, you know, what I got is working. That is not an excuse. Now, if you're disabled where you can't get out and nobody's coming to visit you, your kids are gone, nobody's coming to visit you, you're not getting any support or help. That's a little bit different, but even still with that, you can call customer service. They have online support. They will walk you through how to use certain things, different devices. And of course, there's freaking YouTube. There's freaking YouTube out here. YouTube University. When I say YouTube University, people look at me like I'm crazy. YouTube is a university. Use YouTube like it's an educational source. Don't use it just because it's got like nice entertainment and people laughing and you know, like there's a lot of useful information out here on this platform. There is no excuse if you're 60, 70, 80 years old to why you're stuck in your ways. There's no excuse for that. That may be why you got forced off the job. Because a lot of folks got forced off the job because they weren't willing to uh, learn from somebody else. Learn from somebody who was younger. A lot of times people say, well, man, I work for somebody who's younger than me. They can't teach me nothing. I've been around the game a long time. But you, if you can't learn how to humble yourself, there's 16 year olds who teach me, literally 16. There's a 14 year old boy teaching me right now, right now. He's 14 years old. I'm 36. See, you got to be able to humble yourself, humble your mind like a child if you want to be able to grow and elevate. See, a lot of people don't hear from children. And so that's why. They cannot go to a different level of understanding. They can't reach kids because they're so far up here. They're so far in the clouds. They don't want to come down and, and, and humble themselves and be like, yo, let me hear what you got to say. And um, <clears throat> I talk about this all the time, but I mean, even a guy like Gary V. Gary V does a whole thing about rappers and like that. He does a whole like videos on different rappers, up and coming rappers that are helping the youth. He knows all the different apps that are the youth are watching that are like nine, 10, 11, 13 years old. He knows exactly what apps they're looking at, the TikToks, the thrillers, the, all that kind of stuff. And, he, you know, he suggested to the rappers, hey, get up here, get up on that platform because they're, that's where your audience is, you know, reach your audience out there. But the point I'm making is that He's not like, oh, I'm older. I'm in my 30s. I'm in my high 40s. I don't, know how, I don't even how, know how old he is, but I know he's older. And so he's not like he's reaching down to like 16-year-old rappers, 13-year-old rappers, you know, 19-year-old rappers and, and helping them grow their business, helping them grow their brand, getting his name out there with the young people so they know who he is through his business. Like it's It's a lot of people who don't really understand the point of, or the benefit of humbling yourself, you know? And I'm very humble when it comes to credit. I'm not like, I know every gosh darn thing about it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know, y'all know I'm not gonna say gosh darn on a regular basis. I just want, you know, YouTube to block my video from being up there uh, when it comes to certain words. You can't say certain words on YouTube just because uh, you wanna have a full audience be able to watch it. And I do want young people to be able to watch my information at some point, as well as when I, get, when I launch on my, Things I want to be able to say uh, to the young people out there. And so uh, anyway, let me retract a little bit. So this morning, since I woke up this morning, once I got my son daycare and all that, I've been doing uh, personal lines of credit, personal loan applications. Um, I did two people's loans. I started a new guy's loan. This guy's name is Ebenezer. I don't know if you're watching right now, Ebenezer. Um, you know what I'm saying? Um, hope you don't mind me calling you. I call you Scrooge. I literally call you Scrooge in my head. Like I just like, oh, I see Ebenezer. I call you Scrooge. Don't be offended by that. Just what I see on the paper. Like, oh, Ebenezer. Oh, yeah, I got to finish the application. So I did three applications for him so far. Um, <clears throat> with no luck. I'm still trying to get him some funding um, because he is in check systems. And so we're trying to get him funding. I can get him out of check systems, of course, but he doesn't want to do that yet. But it's the point that I've been working all morning. 
I just stopped at Harris Teeter to get me a slice of pizza. I just had a slice of pizza today. Haven't had no coffee, but I'm trying to give me some coffee as well. But anyway, just telling you a little bit about my day as far as what I do. Like, you know, I got to go to the post office when I'm done with this. I got to send off some letters at the post office. I got to stop by the bank as well. But um, <clears throat> getting into credit leverage, let me tell y'all, and I might have told y'all this in other little side pieces and all that, okay? So there's this guy. I just saw him today. It's crazy because I wasn't even planning on going to the store today, but my wife wanted to talk to me. And so I'm like, okay, what better way to take a break from doing my work? My wife calls me and she wants to talk. Let me go ahead and stop. Take this opportunity to run to the store and I can talk to her on the phone. while I'm still accomplishing something I need to get done, like eating. But um, so my wife calls me on the phone. I give her her conversation. That way she can feel loved because I want her to feel, I don't want her to feel like my business is more important than who she is because that's my queen. Okay. Just like credit is my other queen, but she's the first queen. Okay. So when I go to there, when I go to the store to get my slice of pizza or whatever, there's a guy there. His name is Larson. He's 17 years old. He's been selling shoes, um, flipping shoes at, at, at shows. He told me his, his biggest show, he made $4,000. He made $4,000 when he went to go sell some shoes. And he had people who didn't know what shoes they were buying. They would go to StockX.com, see the price there, and pay him that price, which they didn't really know, <laughs> you know, his hustle. But this guy, you know, size 14 shoe, you know, shoes are very hard, for, hard to find in his size, but he still buys shoes because he knows any size he can sell them. This guy's taller than me, 17 years old, and he made four grand last month. In one day, four grand in one. He's seventeen. He's been selling shoes since he was twelve. He made four grand, and I said, "Look, bro, when you turn eighteen, he said in a couple months. I said, bro, when you turn eighteen, bro, I'm gonna help you get it. We are gonna help build your credit up. You gonna start buying shoes by the boatload with your credit card." He put me on some game too that I can let it because I sell shoes as well. So he gave me some knowledge that, I, that I'm going to. I meant to apply it last night. He asked me, "Hey, did you go look at those shoes or whatever?" I was like, "Nah, I didn't go." last night because I had to do y'all's work. But I say, I'm going to get on it. I got to save my phone. I'm going to get on it. So this guy made $4,000 in a day. <laughs> but um, his knowledge, like he took his knowledge, he took where he was as a young person and didn't use it as an excuse. He has a job. He has a business. He's making money. But I told him like, look, when you turn 18, bro, we're going to help build your credit up. And, bro, you're going to be able to take your credit card and leverage that credit card. Now you can go online and just click. If you get up there, you can get some some uh, some limited edition LeBrons or some Jordans or some Yeezys or whatever you're selling. You can actually go up there and just buy, 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 buy. You don't have to think about it. You already know you're going to make your money back. You already know you got a car with no interest. You already know that the worst case scenario You'll make exactly what you spent on the shoes. That's worst case scenario. You know what? You know what shoes are going to go dead stock. You know that. So now you can get you a ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollar credit card, or thirty thousand worth of credit cards, and leverage it maybe five or ten grand of that on just buying shoes to flip. And so now he can take his. He can go from four thousand dollars in one day to possibly making forty thousand in a day. Just by having more shoes available to be able to flip and sell on Instagram at trade shows, things like that. That's the power of the leverage that you have when you when it comes to your credit. Now, you may not like Blue Parrot headphones. People tell me all the time that, yo, you should buy stuff that you're passionate about. I see the stuff on, on YouTube, on uh, people's, I don't know, uh, other big names of people who speak, uh, different little meme pictures and all that kind of crap. Um, they say, do what you love to do and do it as a business. I've done a lot of things I didn't love to do to make money from, for business. What happened first was, of course, you know, but well, not, not gonna say first, I'm gonna say, can I did candy, I did sales, I did a lot of stuff, right? I had the first, not the first, I had the second iPhone. I had the iPhone 3G. 
I had the iPhone 3G. I bought it from Walmart, $99. That was how much it cost when it came out, $99 for me when I bought it from Walmart. Bought my wife one as well. I cracked my screen on my phone. Broke my screen. And so I'm like, man, I looked at, you know, how much it was going to cost to uh, fix it. And I was like, oh, hell no. I ain't paying that. So I looked online to figure out how to fix it myself. Then I started buying the products to fix it. I bought the wrong product the first two times. Brought the wrong screen. It was like a glass only. You're supposed to get the glass digitized LCD together. And so I, I finally figured it out. I put it together. It took me like two hours to figure out how to do it. But once I did it, I did it again. I took it apart again to see how it worked. And then I saw somebody else who had a broken phone. I said, hey, I can fix that for you. So you can fix it. So yeah, I have to order parts and fix it for you. So I charged them $30 for a, a profit after the parts to fix it for them. Now, after I did that, I was like, yo, bro, I got a business here. I can actually make money by repairing phones. So what I did was I got a t-shirt. I got t-shirts. I'll show you in my closet if you want to see them. I have I like five or six t-shirts. Um, I used to give away my t-shirts that said, you know, I got my phone repaired by I Fix That. And that was my actual company name was I Fix That uh, uh, iPhone Repair. So I would go mobily. I actually fixed the governor's phone here in my state. Uh, I got. A, I didn't know it was the governor's phone. I just went and you know, I was downtown. This day, you know, I was inside somebody's office in a private room. Somebody handed me a phone, and I'm fixing the phone um, inside that office. Now, <clears throat> the reason I'm saying all this is because you don't have to always look at something to be a passion. You can look at the opportunity, not the passion. You got to see the money. You got to have the passion to be able to find and be looking actively searching for opportunities, but you don't have to be passionate about a certain product, a stock, uh, uh, a business opportunity, an investment somewhere. You don't have to be passionate about that whatsoever. I don't have to be passionate about, I just found the property that I can invest in. I don't have to be passionate about it. I want to, I want to invest in properties and it's in another state that is very, very far from me, but it's a very good opportunity for me to invest in. I see the money. I see the. I see what I can get from it. I don't just see like, oh well, you know what? That ain't credit repair. So, you know, I'm not gonna be passionate about that. And so, what I did, what, I, what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna show you this here, so you can actually see it. Another thing I did. Um, this is for y'all. Something y'all y'all can do right now. This not even. You can do it as a business. You don't have to do it. Some of y'all go to church. Some of y'all. Uh, Go to uh, a mosque. People buy, you know, people might wear bow ties before you go, whatever like that. Um, <clears throat> so I created a company. This right here was my company right here that I created from fixing my own iPhone. Okay, I didn't get it from passionate like that. I got it from you know fixing my own iPhone. So I called it. And I had it on Facebook as well. I fixed that iPhone repair. Okay? So I would mobily drive around and fix people's iPhones. Now, what I did before that, I'm trying to pull up that page here. I had another business. It was called Mr. Bowtie. Now, with Mr. Bowtie, what I did with that, and y'all can get up on game on this. I don't mind because I don't sell it no more. So what I did with this is I would get on eBay and I would find, and I'll, I'll pull it up for you so you can see it as well. I don't mind doing that. If y'all don't mind waiting a few seconds, if you don't mind about that, uh, but pause for the call. So what I would do is I would go on eBay. Hey, hey, hey. Pause for the call. Uh, I would go on eBay <clears throat> and what I would do is I would search international products. I would not search for anything in the United States. I would search for... Um, like let me say 007 cufflinks. Cufflinks. Oh, there we go. 
So, so what I'll do is I'll search for bow ties and I would look for the ones that were international and ones that were starting. The starting bid was a penny or 99 cents. That's what I would do. And so what I would I would find different colors, different, different flavors of ties and bow ties, whatever. And I would only bid on the ones that were one cent and 99 cents. And I'll bid on like 50 to a thousand of them all at one time. Buy, 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 or bid, 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 bid. And my max bid would be like five dollars. Okay. So I would get email notifications that I got this, I got that, I got this, I got that, right? So I might spend less than $80 and I would have all these products. Now let me see. I can sort it. Get the uh, filter here. Filter, buy format, categories. Item location. There we go. Uh, let's say worldwide. Done. I'm just editing right now. Okay, let's go to auction. Okay. Let me see. Lowest price. Let's sort by price plus shipping. Lowest first. Okay. So these right here are 007 cufflinks, right? They're, they're like $3 right here, right? They're like $3, $4, $5. It's about that, right? But I know people like those because it's, it's different. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I bought Transformer cufflinks. I bought all types of stuff, right? Just to be able to flip and sell at my church, um, sell at somebody else's church, sell to anybody who I know on Sunday. Dress, if you dress in a suit, I'm going to tell you about my ties, my bow ties, and my cufflinks that I got. And I got them in my trunk. You can come see them out my trunk. $5, $10, $20. You can buy something for real fast. I even had a square card reader. I was swiping cards for it and everything. So <clears throat> the point is, I didn't like, I didn't like, I wasn't passionate about that. I saw the opportunity and I jumped on it. For you, if you're looking at credit, you would be looking at credit as a way of leveraging. You'd be able to do something to produce you more money that will also help your lifestyle, help your credit on top of that. That way you can keep getting more credit and more credit and more credit. And now you can utilize that credit to do other things. Now, a lot of people tell me that they're scared to have a big line of credit. Like, oh, man, don't give me 20K credit card. That's crazy. Like, I just don't I, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'll be I'll spend it all. OK. All that tells me is that you're irresponsible. It's all that tells me is that you don't know how to be responsible enough to see it as a way to make money. You see it as a way for you to spend money and go broke. That's what you see it as. And you can't look at it like that. You got to look at it as, okay, I can leverage this in order for me to become or be put in a better situation. Not saying that where you are isn't good. You might be want to be bet better. You might already make two hundred thousand dollars a year. That's great. You might want five hundred because I know I want five hundred. I know that when I make money, I don't get like this is oh this is it. I've made it. Like no, I want to go to a level above. So it doesn't matter where you are financially. You should always be looking for opportunities to use some leverage. Right now, a lot of people are leveraging YouTube to make money. They're leveraging YouTube to get better credit. They're leveraging free information like this that they can go apply it. That's what that's all I'm talking about is leverage. You might be at work. You're leveraging your work hours to learn something different while you're at work because you know they're paying you right now. You're getting paid to watch YouTube right now. It's fantastic. That's leverage. That's using <clears throat> what you're getting. Like you're already using your time at that job. Why not take that time? Some of y'all driving trucks right now. You're driving your truck. You know what I'm saying? You're on the highway. You got to drive anyway. Why not learn some things? I listen to the radio all day to the same 20 songs. You're learning something. You're not watching. You probably just got it playing on your passenger seat somewhere. Or if you're sitting and you're resting somewhere because you got to rest to get to the next uh, the next location, um, you're still getting paid. You're getting paid per mile. You're getting paid. You're getting to write off those hotel stays and all that. You're using some form of leverage. Now, I just want everybody to take that same leverage, that same knowledge, and uh, put it into the credit realm. Okay? You leverage a job somewhat to get paid hourly. They're leveraging you, really. They're making the most money off of you. But 
you're leveraging it. That way you can still have your bills paid and stuff like that. The problem is most people don't have $1,000 saved up. And I know you came in for some credit talk. I ain't, I ain't done. Trust me. I got more. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you have to be in a place mentally where comfortable, comfortable is no longer a place you want to be. If you keep speaking comfortable, you will always stay where you're at. I know it sounds good to say that, and I'm, I'm going to address it because people are not addressing it. People tell me this, you know, I say, how, how much money do you want to make? Say, what, what, do you, what do you mean? What do you mean? How much money do you want to make? Yeah, like I just offend them. Like, oh, what, do I, what do I want to make? Yes. How much money do you want to make? They tell me, well, you know, just enough to be comfortable. Just enough to be comfortable. Hmm. What is that? Just enough to be comfortable. That means to me, what that means to me, when I see enough to be comfortable, when I hear that, that just means you paying your bills on time instead of paying them late. That means you get to go out on Fridays to go to the club and have a good time. You can eat a red lobster. And on Monday, I really had to stress about it. Um, you can go to the club. You can go eat out. You can go, you know, shopping every once in a while and it not really affect you that much because your bills are paid. That's what comfortable means to me. If that's where you want to be at, I'm not the person you want to talk to. That's not my realm of aura. My energy level does not give off comfortable. If you want comfortable, like I'm not even comfortable sitting down in a nice cushioned seat. I can't get comfortable. I have a problem with the word comfortable. because. I always have to grow. I always have to progress. I can't stay where I'm at. I got to move over right now. I can't even, that, that's even bothering me even saying that and still sitting, sitting in the same place. Like you got to be in the mental space where you want to go beyond. You want to push forward more than where you're at. You got to be thinking a whole lot more, a whole lot different than where you're thinking right now. You got to be pushing past that mediocre level of thinking. Mediocrity produces mediocrity. So if you're mediocre or mediocre, your kid's going to be mediocre as well because that's all you want. That's all they see. And they mimic what they see. Look at babies. Look at kids right now. What they look at? They look at what daddy does and what does mommy do? Mommy works all day, comes home, cooks or doesn't or falls asleep, watches TV. That's what they want to do. They want to go to daycare or go to school. They want to come home, watch TV, maybe play, and then they're going to go to sleep. That's a repetitive cycle of mediocrity that they have. Because that's what they see. They don't see, and they may, I'm just speaking out loud for the majority, okay? A lot of kids don't see daddy working the job, daddy getting off the job, daddy making sure he's spending time with his kid to help with the homework, as well as, you know, going into doing some business on the phone and then putting the child in position to do some business with them, helping them, hey, son, come help me with this business real quick so you can see how I run my business, Okay putting them in the car, taking them to places where they can see different things and see beyond where daddy even is at that moment. Seeing where daddy wants to take the kid or mommy wants to take the kid you know, in the future or where mommy wants the kid to be. Putting the kid in a place where you say he wants to be a doctor. Okay, let's go to the hospital and see what a doctor does. You want to be a firefighter. Let's go to the fire station and see what the fireman does. You know, pushing past that level of, oh, you can't do that. Oh, well, well, son, that's nice. Oh, that's cute. And laughing when they dance and when they shake their butt and all that. You know what I'm saying? And that's it. You got to push past one. You got to want more for your family, for your health, for your credit, for your, you got to, you got to want more. And if you don't, being around me, listening to me is not, you're going to reject everything I say because your mind is not ready for that. So anything I try to give out, you're going to block. You already got your blocks out right now. It's already, when you got your hands crossed, you're already blocking. When you when you got your mind, you're looking away because you don't want to hear it. That means you need to hear it, but you don't want to hear it. So you're not going to conform and change because all you're thinking about is just having enough. It's all you want. It's just to be comfortable. It's hard to hear somebody say, you know, they want you to be great. Like people get uncomfortable when I say, yo, I want you to do great things. They're not used to a black person telling another black person or white person, hey, I tell white people, yo, 
hey, I want you to be successful. I want you to continue to be successful. No matter what your color is, I want you to win. And I clap when you win. I clap. My boy sent me something yesterday, and I'm not going to detail about what it was, but I celebrated with him. I celebrate it, even though he might not have, it might, it might have been uncomfortable for him, but I celebrate it for him. The reason why I celebrate people's successes is because I know my next level of success is coming too. So I have no ill feelings for celebrating or animosity or jealousy or envy to go and celebrate another man, woman, or child for being successful. And if I can do anything to impart any knowledge that I have to help push them to become more successful, I will do that. And I won't do that with, without any type of, you know, um, profit for myself. I do it just because I want to see success. Me seeing success is like a child seeing successful parents. They want to go and do that. They want to emulate that. They're like, I, I can produce the same thing because they produced it. I can reproduce it. And a lot of folks don't think real success, don't know what real success is. Real success is succession. Real success is being able to reproduce success. You making $2,000 a day and not showing somebody else how to make $2,000 a day, you're not successful yet. You got to be able to reproduce what you've done. That's where real success lies. And that's what I want people to think. And the success is not just money. It can just be a way of thinking, a way of living. You know, and a lot of people aren't on my level of thinking and not trying to get to my level of thinking. So everything I say is null and void to them. They will not hear it or they'll hear it, but they won't be listening and go one, at one ear, not the other, because they're not in a mental place to hear me. They think because I make a certain amount of money now that I can say that now. I was saying this and you can ask anybody who truly knows me. You can ask, um, you definitely can ask CJ. You can ask my wife. You definitely go back in history. I've got videos. I've got outside of YouTube. You know what I'm saying? I've been doing uh, speaking engagements. I spoke at colleges, and I don't even have a college degree. I spoke at churches, and I showed a church how they can get the whole entire church debt free within five to seven years and pay off the whole entire edifice of the church in its totality, and help other new members come into church and become debt-free when they get there and really make people whole. And people don't listen. They ain't listen to that. I've been doing this and talking about this and pouring out for a long time. And that's why when CJ is one who motivated me, motivated me to even get on Facebook, be like, bro, you got too much knowledge, my dude. You got to get on. You got to get on YouTube, bro. You got to get on YouTube. You've been telling me for years, Jay, 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 bro, you create your channel yet? Why ain't you got a channel yet? And so he pushed me out here. Okay. So CJ is the reason why y'all even know who I am. That's the only reason I even have a channel is because of that. And I give all praise to that. Okay. And I don't, hey, Siri, I'm not talking to you. Okay. But um, <clears throat> a lot of people don't know how to give reverence. Like even with stealing photos on Instagram, they can't say where they got the photos from. They don't even want to tell them about it because they can't make their own content. They don't have any creativity and they don't even have the reverence to take that create that non-creativity and at least give a shot to the person who they got the creativity from because they want to be known as the big dog. They want to get all the likes because they created this when they didn't create something because they have no creativity. You know, they're reaching out because they have nothing. They got to take somebody else's something to create a something in their life. Oh man, I'm I'm preaching right now. I'm sorry. Um, but getting back into the leveraging, the leveraging of credit. There's gonna be a new product. It's probably be a new Samsung product. I know Apple has a new headset coming out, which is a two kind of like how that have, they have the uh, what are they call the earbuds. The, uh, my wife has them. What are they call the freaking uh, earbuds, whatever like that. Those earbuds. Those um, what do you call those things? I can't think of the technical name for them. They can't fit in my ears though because my ears are shaped funny. Okay. If y'all know I got I got pointy ears. My ears are like real pointy. I got what they call elf ears. I was called elf and Spock when I was in school and all that. You know what I'm saying? I got the pointy, the real pointy ears and stuff like that. But 
That's who I am. I got a little widow's peak as well. You know what I'm saying? I got arched eyebrows. I don't cut my eyebrows. They're automatically arched. This is my uniqueness. This is my big nose. This is my unique. This is my crooked bottom tooth. That That is just, you know, who I am. I don't change that. I don't try to conform to make people feel better about themselves by, you know, talking down and looking down on me. But anyway, they got these new headsets coming out, man. So Apple has new a new headphone. It's going to be a two-part headphone, two pieces, both, both ears like that. They're going to be wireless. It's going to be Apple. It's not going to be Beats. Okay? That new product, guess who's buying it? Me. I'm buying it for myself. Oh, you know I'm getting that. I, I don't care if it comes out August, September. I'm an Apple fanatic. I will buy everything Apple. I don't care what y'all say. This is what I do. I like Apple stuff because Apple doesn't let me down when it comes to stuff. Me personally. Okay? But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to flip it. Because I know it's not going to be a lot of people or a lot of, a lot of places that's going to have that product. They're going to sell out really fast. People are looking for the newest devices, especially from Apple. And so I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy like 20 of them. Why? So I'm going to get it for no interest on a credit card. i probably get a new credit card just to buy it. That way I can leverage that credit card. And if I don't sell them within the first week, it takes me a month or two months. Whatever. It doesn't matter. I know I can at least make the money back. At least make the money back. But I promise you, I'm, I'm, when, when they become sold out of stores and stuff like that, I'm, I'll make more than that. That's just one thing. Now, is there a new uh, Samsung, not Samsung or uh, Android devices coming out? Is there a new shoe that's coming out that might be very, very hot that people know that it's going to sell out? You know, um, and it could be anything. Be anything. It can be a certain um shit making me Girl Scout cookies for all I care. If you need to withdraw the cash off a card and buy Girl Scout cookies. But no matter what it is, there's plenty of ways for people to leverage that credit. Stop thinking about that Gucci shirt you want. Stop thinking about them, them, them rims you want, because those rims, and trust me, nothing wrong with having a desire to get certain things. I'm not knocking you for doing that, okay? But those rims you want so bad, I promise you, I promise you this, they're gonna be they're gonna be a whole lot cheaper as soon as you buy them. You're gonna find them somewhere else, they're gonna be a lot cheaper. Okay. <clears throat> it's a cop magnet, number two. Okay. So you got more, you're gonna get more tickets just for having it. You know, even if you didn't run a red light, you probably get pulled over anyway, because your cause your rims say, you know, you might be doing something illegal. That's how I mean it's just it's just more eyes on you. Get the eyes off you. Don't forget, forget about those rims. Forget about that stuff that don't matter. Invest in something that makes you money and then take that money and go buy your rims. I don't mind you buying rims because that might be something you just really want your rims. But whatever it is, whatever you have a desire for that costs a lot of money, before you go buy that thing that costs a lot of money, make an income producing asset first. Get an asset that pays you every month, every week first. And then take that money and buy what you need. Work your money. Learn how to work your money. Teach kids how to work the money if you got some kids. Show them how their money can work. Okay? Show them how if you put, they put money in their piggy bank, you'll put more money in their piggy bank. If they save the money, like, do you want to go, you know, you want to go to Target and buy a toy? They might say, no, I don't want to buy no toy. I want you to, I want to put my money in my piggy bank, daddy. So that way I can have a whole lot more money when the new, 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 new toy comes out. Okay. Whatever. They're getting the mentality of, you know, doing right with their money. And they know if they invest it in this bank and not invest it at Target, that they can get a, uh, some interest on it because they know if, you know, daddy's going to put more money in it because I put money in it. That's teaching about interest already out the gate. But, it's very hard for me to not pour out information to people that I know there's, there's that, that that can help them. It's very hard for me. A lot of people would like try to refrain from certain information. Now, of course, I have my own intellectual property I got to protect. But other than that, like I try to pour out as much as I can to the next generation, to the next person, because I want them to be successful. I don't, as I'll tell you about if you fix your own credit, fantastic. Start a YouTube channel, okay? If you're fixing credit, get you an Instagram. Get you a Facebook. I had a Facebook. My Facebook got closed. I just never opened another one. I don't need it, okay? Get you a Facebook. Get you a LinkedIn. 
Start showing your results to people that you're doing from certain clients. Start doing some credit repair for free for some friends just to, you know, uh, get comfortable or test out how to repair credit. Okay, test out some theories, test out some letters you got, things like that. Uh, write some letters yourself to figure out what works and what doesn't. Okay, you and I hope you become successful in doing that. Trust me, you're not my competition. I don't have any competition. CJ, not my competition. Nobody in this YouTube world that's in credit is my competition because I already bring my own value. I have my own set apart value that I bring that. I stand up. I'm going to stand out no matter what. I'm going to have my own thing no matter what. I'm going. I got several businesses. Yours does not threaten me. If another person's business threatens you, there's something wrong. This is why successful people don't hang out with a lot of broke people who are successful financially. Let me say, they don't hang out with a lot of broke people. The reason why they don't is because they don't know how to separate themselves or look at somebody that's successful and still be able to praise them for being where they are and going up. See, successful people hang out with successful people. So they don't mind, bro, you did it. You did it, man. Fantastic, you did it, you did it. But when you got somebody who doesn't have, this is what they say. Oh, it must be nice. Oh man, that must be nice. Oh, you drove a Porsche. Oh, it must be nice. I wish I had that. See, now it's a pity party. I can't even I can't even tell you that I did something because you don't have the mental capacity to know that you're up next. Because you're not working towards anything I'm telling you to do or being inspired by things that I am giving you, my aura that I'm giving you. You're not being inspired by that because you're so your 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 mind is so is is just it's just shrinking. It's not expanding. It's just going down here. It's like you feel like you're nothing around people who are something. When that's not the case, everybody in the room is something. It's just the fact of how you treat other people. Body language says a lot. Your eyes say a lot. And when you say things, the things you don't say, say a lot. And so the whole must be nice is, and oh, that's great. And I wish I could do that. All you're saying is, I want you to focus back on me because I'm not there. When people tell me they have something, and I know that I want that same something. I ask questions after I celebrate them. I'm like, yo, how, how did you get that, man? How the hell can I get that too? What I got to do? Who, where I got to invest? What button I got to go press right now? Tell me to go press the button. I got one guy on here right now, and I hope y'all go subscribe to him. Uh, his name is uh, Elisha B. Ram. And uh, I'm actually going to type his name in here right now, okay? So this is Elisha, B-A-R, B-E-A-R. Um, I'll be messing up his name, and I apologize. I always mess up his last name. <laughs> but uh, tell him, <clears throat> don't tell him uh, I messed his name up, okay? <laughs> I think there's, a, there's an H there. I'll be messing up. I do mess up his name a lot, and I'm actually going to find him just because, just because. I mean, he is, um, he is like a big part of the reason I am where I am right now. Okay. And somebody just, uh, somebody just paid. Give me one second. Elisha, where you at, brother? Where you at? Like I said, nobody told me to do this. This is not something that I'm just doing from any type of paid advertisement and all that. Y'all know I just I just freestyle. <laughs> I don't have any uh oh, I'm signed into a different account. That's why. 
That's why. If I do that later. But his name is Elisha uh, B. Ramp. He's on YouTube. Um, and uh, he just got on YouTube. Like, I think he's got like two videos, three videos out right now. And um, But before he was on YouTube, he was my mentor in business. And so I would call him and he would show like, you know, he made $10,000. You know, he, I mean, he has like, I don't know, 17 Instagram accounts that are all over 10,000 subscribers and all that. So I wanted to know like, yo, how'd you get 10,000 subscribers? Naturally, not paid for. All of them is all natural. How'd you drive traffic to yourself? You know, and uh, he would give, he would give things away. He would, he would always answer the phone and uh, be around to give me impartation about business. Uh, about things I could do to expand my business. And I just didn't just hear him. I applied everything he said, uh, not always to the T because, you know, I still was lazy with some with some things. Like people will tell you they did everything. Like, nah, I still had some things I didn't do. But the majority of it, I did and I applied. And uh, that's a lot of reasons why I'm even successful to this day. And that goes back years as well. And I actually met CJ through this guy. You know what I'm saying? And so it's very, very important that, you know, people hear the connections that I'm talking about. And it's not, it's not always going to be that first person you meet. It could be the next person you meet tied to that person or because that person you got somewhere else here and here and here and here. And so, um, oh man, it's just, it, it, it's so much I could say, so much I could say about business and leveraging and, 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 and how to think. Um, but, what it, what it all really boils down to is, are you willing to humble yourself enough to hear someone who may or might, may, may or may not be younger than you, older than you, to actually not be lazy and to start applying some things that you're actually learning and you're told to do, um, or that you know that you should do. You know, people, I hear people all the time say, yeah, yeah, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. Well, why aren't you doing it? And you're like, well, I'm just stuck. Well, you're stuck because you're not doing anything. And you're like, well, I don't have time. Well, you have time for what you choose to have time for. Now, at the same time, of course, I know people have different lives, but you've got mothers out here going to school full time, working full time with a part time job. Um you know, have a kid or three, you know what I'm saying? Still making sure the kids eat, still being there for different events for the kids and all that super mom stuff. And then you telling me that you a girl or a woman, you ain't got no kids. You ain't got time. You're not in school. You ain't got time. You telling me that you a young brother out here and you ain't got time to apply things that could take you to another dimension mentally. Cause see, I, I, I do, I do feel like this when you, when you're a person who doesn't have a lot, when you don't have, when you do get something after you go through that whole process of blowing money, cause you will blow money. You're definitely going to blow some money. Once you, if you don't have money and you get money, you're going to blow money. I know that for a fact. There ain't going to be no question about it. You're going to blow some money and you need to get out your system. Go ahead and do it. Take you a couple of G's and go and have a good time. Blow it, blow it, blow it. That's going to happen, okay? But um, you have to find yourself and find some balance to where you're going to start saying, okay, I'm not going to blow money. I am now going to invest money to produce more money. And when you start doing that, you start to have an appreciation of your money. It's like when you're coming up, it's, it's, it's a whole lot better than already having it. Just because when you already have it, you don't appreciate it as much. But once you get it, you really you really appreciate it. And you know, you become, sometimes people become real stingy. Some people I know make a lot of money and they real stingy, boy, because they know what it was like not having. They don't want to go back to not having. So they're very, very stingy with their money. Then you got those who are very, very, you know, plentiful or, you know, they throw money out there. Anytime they see opportunity, they throw money out there. They lose 20 grand, they lose 20 grand. But at least they they tried to invest in something over there. Invest over here, they made forty grand, so they lost twenty. Made forty over here, just took twenty thousand dollars. Okay, you got people like that. 
But I just want people to get into the mental space of the leverage power that you have. So much power that you have. Like there's people out here still selling vacuums door to door. Still selling and still making money. Still selling knives door to door. And they're still making money. You got people out here who are buying toothpick companies for toothpicks. And they're buying them, these companies, and they're making all their money back that they invested in the companies and then making profit after the first year and a half. Selling toothpicks, toothpicks, paper clips. No lie. <laughs> and so, like, think about all the things you use in your house that's like that small, like that small, or even smaller, like real, real thin. How much does it cost? Think about who's actually selling that product. Who's pushing that product for that small little piece of something that's in your house? And now it's a billion dollar company. It's a million dollar company. What if you could get a piece of that because you got some leverage credit? What if you got $100,000 in credit cards? You got $30,000 you can pull out in cash because you don't have the cash right now. But the opportunity pops up and you can pull out maybe $15,000 or $30,000 in cash. Yes, you're going to have a fee you're going to have to pay every month that's going to be added on. It's going to accrue interest or whatever like that. But who cares? You got an investment over here going that's making you 10 times what you're paying in interest over here. That's how your mind has to think. You can't think so small. You're thinking about that little bit of money you got on that credit card that you're holding it hostage and it's not actually working for you. I got people I tell all the time, hey, give me a call if you got some credit cards right now that are in good standing. And you want to make some money because I sell authorized user trade lines. A lot of folks didn't even call me. A lot of folks will hit me up. Uh, and I know they got credit card. I know some of y'all watching right now, you got a credit card that you can be making some money from. But because you're so scared somebody's going to take your information and do something with it, you decide not to call me. And now you got, you, you're you missing $1,000, $300 a month off people who, you know, just want to buy um, um a trade line. It's all they want. They just want to be able to leverage and uh, they're not trying to steal your information. I'm not trying to show you the information, but it's because you just, you're so blocked. You just like, everything is a scam. Everything is bad. Everything don't work. And you know, you're missing out on money on that simple fact, on that simple thought process, just because. And so people who are watching this new, if you do have some credit cards that have good history and you want to make some money, you can send me an email. Give me a call. I'm sure that Ashley will put the email up here again at some point. Uh, but it's inquiry at jadenosecredit.com. Um, if you don't already know, inquiry at jadenosecredit.com. You can send an email there if you want to become uh, an affiliate. I have a link for that. You can definitely do that. And, uh, yeah, let me get some questions. I know you probably got some questions out here. And I just kind of went straight into my little rant today. <laughs> But uh, hopefully, you know, y'all got something from it. Let's see. And she said, I'm going to come back. Good morning. Would a credit repair program take care of deleting my old addresses or should I send letters to all their credit bureaus? Super Queen B. We take care of all old addresses, Super Queen. Um, you don't have to worry about that. I know you're already in the program right now. You don't have to do nothing. Don't send nothing. Do no work whatsoever. We got you. Open up your federal checking account and savings account last night. Word. The first rep gave me a problem, but the second rep took care of me. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you call, they'll tell you one thing, just hang up the phone and call back. Somebody's gonna give you an account. Great, great job, real life. Oh, another thing. If you don't already have uh, great credit. Your credit is in the rebuilding stage and you got a Navy Federal account already. Go ahead and apply for their um, their bad credit credit card. What well, Not bad credit, sorry, secured credit card. So secured credit card will help you rebuild your credit. Um, I have one testimony of a client who got the credit card. She had it for four months. The fourth month, they upgraded her card from a secured $500 line and gave her an unsecured $2,000 and refunded her $500 back into her account, okay? So it's a beautiful thing. Uh, they usually say six months, and then they'll change to an unsecured card. 
But um, definitely want to get that if you have uh, not so great credit right now and you're rebuilding, okay? Pause for the calls there. Uh, what's going on, Focus Transit? How you doing? Biz1321 just signed up a few days ago. Word, word. Told them my great grandfather served, no problem. Thanks, Jay. Oh, Timothy, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glad you glad you got that. Uh, wanted to talk to you about automated trading to see your take on it. Uh, I don't do automated trading. Um, I am building my own system that tells people like you know when to trade. The, the problem with, with, with automated things is that it it doesn't it doesn't see. It, it can't see. It doesn't see certain factors that your eyes can see. And so I'm trying to do something that's going to go through and kind of add the sight to it. And that might, it might not make sense to you, but a lot of automated systems out there, for my point, they don't work. A lot of programs that do trading that say they got the best uh, trading uh, training program for a lot of them, um, a lot of them just full of crap. Every trading program will work. If you if you know how to work it, the problem most people don't know how to work it. They don't know the law of averages and all that. Um, it'll work in some capacity. It may not work in the capacity that you want it to work in. Uh, if you want a high level of trading success, then you want to stick to a plan and trade that plan every trade. The problem is people try to get so many different plans together when they're trading, and now they don't uh, have any success because they're trying to add what this person does and combine it with what this person does. And those two things together don't work. Only one of those right there may work. And it might be a 50, 60 or 40, 60 chance of win loss rate. But even at a 60% win loss rate, if you have the right leverage ratio, you're still in profit, even at 60, 60%. You want to try to get the 80% though. Uh, if you want to have a lot of success, but even with that, if you have that and also you have that blow account with you, then um, that'll definitely help your success as well. But uh, to answer your question, automated systems, I'm not a big fan of. I'll just say that. Time for credit pay for days ago. Looking forward to the results. Word, word. Let's see. Always, always be teachable. Wait till you find out God is a woman. Hey, I tell everybody all the time, I say, you know, and it's not to knock anybody who's not black, but I tell I tell people, you know what I'm saying, the black woman is God. So I tell people all the time, like, the black woman is God. The black woman has all of the attributes of a God. A woman, period, has all the attributes of a God, almost all the attributes. I just feel like a black woman just has a little bit more of a... Uh, Little little umph above, you know, and that's because I have a black woman and I'm married to a black woman, so don't be offended by that. Okay, uh, let's see, Kareem, gosh darn it, <clears throat> let's see, um, Jay, no respect, but you eat like a bird. <laughs> I do, I do actually, and you'll find out that, um. That's not my intent. I just do a lot of things. I do a lot of things. I'm actually trying to do better. Um, I try to go back to my, I used to do 6,000 calories a day because that's what I need to have for me to gain weight. I need 6,000 calories a day to gain weight. So I'm getting back to that. Um, it's just trying to find balance. The, the hardest thing to do is trying to find balance for yourself, balance of time, family, um, extracurricular activities while you're running a business. It's a very hard thing, and that's why a lot of people get divorced is because they have a very, very hard time finding balance for their spouses. And after a while, the money is not sexy no more, and people get divorces. And so I'm still going through my whole balance stage right now in business. And what I make sure I do is I make sure at least you know my wife is happy on a lot of, a lot of fronts, but I still have to get balance on other things like food, like um you know, entertainment, things like that. Um, cause I don't do a lot of entertainment. I don't watch, I don't watch TV. Um, I can't tell you last time I cut TV on that wasn't to look at a chart. I look at a chart on a big screen sometimes, but other than that, my wife is here watching TV while and out 
things like that. Sometimes they're on over there because it's the living room over there, and I'm here in the kitchen on the computer. I'm not even watching the TV. So, <laughs> um, all a lot of work. I'm, I'm trying to get there, man. Don't don't judge me too hard. I'm trying to get there. Um, Jay, training increase came off nicely. Experience increase are coming off with only one left. A thing like a Christian. A hey, um, yes. Yeah, send me a message, a text message. If you got one left, if it's on experience, Experian does that crap where I'll send something in for Experian and then they'll always leave some. I told people that before, like Experian is the only one I have to resubmit twice for. So if you got one left on Experian, thing like a Christian, um, let me know what that one is. I'm sure if I can log in and see it, but sometimes I don't know if you're, we well, you say it's on Experian, so I, sh I should see it. But yeah, I get I get names confused with these screen names. You know that thing like a Christian. I forget your real name. So send me a message. That way I know this was you on this YouTube. And that way I can resubmit that one entry you have left. Uh, how many entries did you have, thing like a Christian? How many did we take off for TransUnion for you? Oh, also, bro, send me a screenshot, bro. I need that for advertisement, bro. I say that kind of like people could just say bro every other word. Hey, bro. Look, bro. Uh, send me a screenshot, bro. I need that screenshot for advertisement right now, bro. Okay. All right. Uh, you got a camera inside my truck. Oh, <laughs> 305 truck. I'm leveraging this job's Wi-Fi to tune in. That's what I'm talking about, man. Might as well. You there. You acquire higher credit limits to le leverage your inventory to make more money. Facts. Uh, that's what I like about your channel, bro. Your info is well-rounded. If I were always about the same things. I probably wouldn't have subscribed. Keep it up, King. I appreciate that, Michael McRae. Salute to you, King. Um, <clears throat> let's see. In other words, they some simple-minded. Yes. <laughs> Facts. What's good? You said we live, baby. Hey, I, I, hey, I don't mind being up, man. You know what I'm saying? I'll be Uncle Jay. Uh, yeah, the AirPods. That's what it was, the AirPods. I couldn't even think of it. Thank y'all for that. Um, yeah, the B245. Yeah, bro, I'm going back to old school, man. I got some pictures of me back when they had the old, old ones, like uh, like 13 years ago. I had the ones, those other blue parrots from back at that time. So you know how long I've been rocking with the blue parrots. <laughs> But I had to get that. Uh, had to get that 450, man. That thing is fantastic. So we as people have to leverage our credit to attack this financial gap we are in. We can't just be concerned with self indulgence. We have to look at the bigger picture to change our conditions. All facts. ATL Capricorn. With the love. Uh, streams of income producing assets. That's what you need to have. You got to have it. Thanks, Jay, for the knowledge. There's nothing more frustrating than watching YouTube and the most valuable information you need to get started is left out of the content. Yep. <laughs> Crabs in the bucket. You already know, Lero. If anyone has a credit question, I got you. I see you, Ashley. Only three people online. Wow. <laughs> I got a card I want to give you with $1,100 limit. Had it a year. You can see it on my file. Let me know. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. I'll check that out, Kareem. Uh, I think your last name is Carswell. I think that's your last name, but I'll check that out. Uh, the rants are educational. <laughs> I appreciate that too. Uh, let's see. Krishna, is it a good idea to close my lower credit cards before getting funding? Don't close any credit cards whatsoever. I have two $500 limits, one negative item to remove. Once I get it removed, I'll add trade lines, then apply for funding. Okay. Yeah, don't remove any. I don't care if you got a credit card that's got a two hundred dollar credit limit, but you've had it for seventeen years. To not delete that, I don't care. They won't give you an increase. Do not, do not, do not close that account. Please don't do that. You're gonna mess your credit up. Okay. Let's see the rent. Uh, what were her spending uh, methods like? Uh. Oh, what were her spending methods like? Oh, she just did basic stuff. Um, <clears throat> and I'll actually show you here. Um, this is I'm gonna show you exactly. 
who this person is. So even though I'm just making stuff up, uh, this is my uh, my Instagram. And my Instagram is uh, J Knows Credit. I'm J Knows Credit on Instagram. Make sure you put that out there as well, Ashley. J Knows Credit. Please go subscribe to your boy. Um, also, share my channel. I'm like, I don't know, 90 people away from being at 7,000 subscribers. So, hey, please tell somebody to go subscribe so I can hit that 7,000. That would be fantastic. But this is her. And um, you go to the actual message she put in here. Why did she, she didn't delete it, did she? No, she didn't. Ooh, there we go. So you know it's a live, not the screenshot that I took from somebody. If you can see that, hopefully you all can read that. Zoom in just a little bit. But yeah, I just want to make sure y'all read that and y'all saw. So uh, yeah, she went, got it, and then it shows her little credit line increase right there because it went to two thousand dollars right there at the bottom. Okay, and that's just us messaging back and forth right there. Okay, so on some other tips. But yeah, so that was real, all real. Uh, let's see. How much do you suggest to put on an NFC card? Uh, $500 is, is enough. You're going to put a lot. Um, no more than that. That's fine. Just check your Instagram page. Jay uh, won't come up. It says error occurred. Thought you might want to know that. Ignore my post. Instagram now working fine. <laughs> okay. Hey, guys. What's up? Live stream is cool. Check me out. Um, let's see. I'll send you a text. Yeah, David F. Yeah, okay, got you. I'll send the screenshots too. I'm paying my AU package off Friday. Fantastic. TransUnion has eight removed. Look at that. Eight inquiries removed off of uh, David F's profile live on YouTube right now. Uh, David F., um, how how long did it take from, I mean, you can go from payment. How long from when you paid? Because I probably did, I'm, I'm telling you right now, if you pay, a lot of times I don't submit the same day. Unless it's a low value, low volume day. If I can go the next day, um, the maxes, it'll be 48 hours by the time it's turned in. And then as far as accepted, another 48, 72 hours for it to be accepted. But I'm going to go from the start date of when he paid. So, uh, David F., from the time you paid, from the time you got the alert that it was, re it was removed, how, how long was that for you, sir? If you don't mind being candid today about that. And while you do that, I'm going to look at the rest of these questions. Uh, let's see, Jay, what is the cost to delete a closed account? Okay, to delete a closed account, it depends on how much it is. Okay, it depends on exactly how much you have in there. Thank you for that, Ashley. But yeah, it depends on exactly how much you have. The closed accounts, the minimum is going to be eight hundred dollars minimum if it's under five grand. Uh, if just a closed account, it'll be eight hundred dollars. Even if it's just one account, if it's five accounts still under five grand, it'll still be eight hundred dollars. Okay, it took about five days for TransUnion from the day I paid, and about seven days for Experian. Okay, <laughs> that just goes to show you how fast that. That thing happens. Uh, you provide financing for your trade lines. You can report our payments uh, to the bureaus. If you provide financing. Oh, yeah. If you provide financing. <laughs> uh, uh, unfortunately, I don't do financing. Uh, I am looking to get myself into being able to do reporting. That is a whole nother process of money. Uh, it's another level of money I have to even have and things I have to go through in order to do proper reporting. So um, 
that'll come at some point as my business grows. But that is definitely already on the radar for me to do that. I'm telling you right now. How can we get Equifax to update the files? Uh, what do you mean? How do you get up? How do you get Equifax to upgrade the file? I'm not, I don't understand your question. Update what files? Uh, yeah, man, it had me really hyped. Had me really hyped up. Yeah, it can happen that fast. Like you know, not everybody happens exactly that fast, but a lot of people happen it happens that fast for. Uh, let's see, twenty three hundred dollar account, twenty three hundred dollar account, seven hundred dollar account. Anything else? Focus. I said, if you have five accounts, tell y'all right now, live. You got five accounts that are closed accounts that are not repos because repos are extra, but just five regular accounts that are closed. A collection, maybe, or two or three, whatever. But a total of five. If they're under five grand, it has to be under five thousand dollars for five. If you got more than five accounts and it's under five grand, it will not be eight hundred bucks. But if it is, it will be eight hundred bucks. Additional accounts will cost more. So if you got six accounts, you're gonna pay nine hundred dollars. You got seven accounts, you can pay a thousand dollars. Now, if the amount goes over that five grand, you're in a different bracket. So that's why I say everybody is not going to be no set price. So you asking me how much it's going to cost for your stuff, I don't have enough information to give you an exact price. That's why I tell you it's going to depend on what you have on your profile. Do you also help with student loans? I'm not a citizen, but have a social and want to get private student loans. I do help remove student loans. Um, I do have a company that will help you with that. Um, if you need to get them, if you need to consolidate them, I got a company to help you consolidate them. If you just want to remove them, yes, you can remove student loans. I can move those for you through a credit suite process. As long as you have the payment to pay for your services, you can get what you want. Absolutely. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, yeah, yeah, hopefully y'all enjoyed this today. Hopefully you're ready to do some leveraging and not just spending money. Spending money is cool, but um, I've had people already hit me up again for credit repair because they've already messed their credit up already. They've already done it through me, and they're coming back to me to do it again. And so it's like, man, like, why go through that, like? Why go through all that headache um, and spending more money and, you know, just to mess your credit up again? See, credit repair. Uh, Equifax has been taking forever to update. Is there anything we can do from our end to get them to move faster? Um, you're talking about on the, I'll say you said, through, through a credit repair, Equifax has been taking forever uh, am I doing your profile? Are we doing your profile, Kevin? Let me see. Is your name Kevin? Is that your, uh, your government name? Or is that your middle name? I'm trying to see if I, even, if I have you as a client here. I like doing things live. No flex. I don't see your name here as a client. I don't have a Kevin. Let's see if I have a Thompson. Thompson. Oh, you're doing repair for a client. Okay. I got you. <clears throat> okay. Um, what do you mean forever? Has it been more than 45 days? Because if it hasn't, they're still within their rights to where they can wait. I'm slow typer too, man. I'm I'm the pecker. I'm that guy like this. That's me. I'm very slow at typing. That's why I have. Um, <laughs> that's why I have Ashley help me out because I I'm very slow. I I'm slow at that, and it's not the fact that I haven't tried to learn. I'm still trying to learn how to properly find the letters without you know just kind of typing without looking 
I'm just bad. I have to keep deleting and deleting every time I do it. So willing to learn it, just man, I'm, you know, catching on is 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 the hard part to doing it properly. I still peck. But yeah, um, to answer your question, um, not really a whole lot you can do. Um, you can have the client call in, or you can call in and act like you're the client if you want, as long as you call from their phone number or have them call you on call them three way and you do all the talking to see what the update is on their profile. But um, not really a whole lot you can do. You got to wait that 45 day period for them to do it. You can do escalations. You can say, you know, hey, you know, I sent this in. It's been longer than the time you told me it was going to be. If it has been that much time, you can escalate it. But an investigation is in progress and it hasn't bypassed that time. They have time to do it. And uh, another reason, get to my another point, my next point, and I'll be done with y'all. I, you know, I want to hold y'all up here. But uh, <clears throat> there's no point in asking me how your profile is doing. Let's say I'm doing your credit sweep. You asked me to do a credit sweep for you. You've already paid for your credit sweep. There's no point in calling me in a week and ask me how the process is going. This is not credit repair. So I'm trying to nip the calls in the butt as well as help you understand why you don't need to call me. This is why you don't need to call me until enough time has passed by. So when your file is submitted, your file is submitted and it's done. All communication does not come to JNO's credit. All communication goes to the client. You are the person's ID. You have the address, your phone number, all that information. They're not going to contact me to say anything. I don't have anybody signing any of their rights over. You don't sign no power of attorney, nothing like that. You might do that with Lexus and Law over there. You don't do that crap with me. So they might keep you in the dark about stuff. I'm not going to do that. All information goes to you. Fact. And yes, in business days is a fact. Okay? Business days. So um, definitely business days. So when you're floating, <coughs> excuse me. When you are in the process of the repair, you have alerts. And I tell everybody, if you don't already have Credit Karma on your phone, I don't know what's wrong with you. Get Credit Karma, especially if you're doing anything that has to do with TransUnion and Equifax. You should have Credit Karma on your phone. There's no reason why everybody watching this does not have the free app that's free, Credit Karma. You should have that. And you should at least have the Experian app, the free one on your phone. So you have at least three ways to view your credit and get alerts on your phone. Now, Credit Karma is going to update every seven days, which means that something could have happened to your profile already, but it may not alert you because it may not be as important to alert you about it because it's not a really big thing. If it's an inquiry that's getting taken off, it may not interrupt your seven-day cycle. They have a seven-day cycle that they update on. They have special things that update that cycle to where it'll update before seven days. If you have Credit Karma, if you have Credit Karma long enough, you will have noticed that. You might have noticed that your Credit Karma used to update every Friday, but something that was really big interrupted that whole cycle, and now, now yours updates every Wednesday or something like that. Okay? Now, because of inquiries not a big thing, you may not see that interrupted. The collections removed, you may see that depending on um, how they, I don't know their exact algorithm of how they determine what's important to update before seven days and what's not. Okay, I'm not saying I do. I'm saying that they do do that crap. <laughs> okay, now if you don't, if you know you waited to that seventh day, in that seven day period, Anything could have been erased in that seven-day period. And now you're hitting me up like, man, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? I have people hit me up like that all the time. And then two days later, their stuff gets taken off, literally, because they got the alert for it. Now, it could have happened the day they called me, but they didn't get an alert about it, so they didn't see it. They're not going to always alert you the time that it happens. They'll alert you for increase 
sometimes with certain apps that delete they alert you to the time that the uh, inquiry happens. There are other apps that alert you 24 to 48 to 72 hours later that you got an inquiry. Okay? So every different process will be different. Every single program will be different. But my point is you should have a monitoring service that gives you an alert, especially you should already have, you know, Experience and, and, and credit karma automatically on your phone. That way, you know exactly what has updated and changed in your credit file at least every seven days, at the least. So, if your credit karma just updated today and nothing has come off, there's no point in calling me, Jay. How's my credit profile doing? I don't know. Nothing comes to me. That's why I say you have to tell me. That's why I say, hey, you got to send me a screenshot. Mm -hmm. If I could see it myself, I wouldn't need a screenshot. I would just show my, I would screenshot all your stuff and put it on Facebook or Instagram or whatever or YouTube. Okay. But I don't have that kind of access. Now, do I have access to your Experian profile? Yes, I do. Experian updates every day. Yes, it does. But what doesn't update every day on Experian is your other two bureaus. They do not update every day, they update once. Now, if you want me to go spend your money, because your money's tied to Experian, you have Experian.com card is on there. I can go up into your Experian report account and hit buy all new reports. It might cost you 30, 40 bucks to go ahead and pull all your all your files over. Okay. But I don't think you'd be very happy with that if I do it that way. And so I don't do it that way. I'd rather you tell me what's update on your profile because that's more exciting. It's more exciting to get an alert than for me to tell you what's going on. You get an alert and you see it and you say, oh, crap. I got all this off my credit report or my score went up 60 points or whatever like that. That's a whole lot more exciting than me saying, yeah, bro, uh, you know, this came off your credit. When you can see it from the credit bureaus themselves, you can just show it off. Oh, oh, look, everybody look, you know, <laughs> to do it that way. So say I have you sign over a power of attorney and going through that whole process and having letters coming to me and hiding information from you. You see, like most companies do that power of attorney crap because they don't want you to see what they're disputing, what they're not disputing. I dispute everything on your credit profile when it comes to traditional credit, tr traditional credit uh, repair, uh, as well as your inquiries. And so if you've done inquiry service, which I know that uh, Mr. David has. He's got the alert already, but he's also going to get a letter in the mail from TransUnion with the list of all his inquiries that were disputed. And it's going to show, uh, we'll send this deleted, uh, deleted. So he actually got a letter of proof that shows that I did the work I said I was going to do. If I'm doing traditional repair and you're getting letters in the mail, those letters will show what was disputed and what, what, uh, what all was disputed, what came off and what did not come off. So there's no reason why you can't say that, well, Jay is not working on our profile because you're going to see it on paper. Most companies like Lexus and Law and all the other companies out there, they have you sign over your power of attorney. That way they get all the letters in the mail and you have to basically call them or log into a site to see your results because they don't want you to see that they're not doing no work. A lot of them do like one dispute, two disputes. Some of them five is their max. Some of them two is their max, depending on who you're going with as far as the service is concerned. And they'll tell you, well, we're only doing this many per month because we don't want to upset the credit bureaus and all that kind of stuff and make them feel blah, 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 which is all BS. If you've got 27 negative items, I'm sending in a letter for 27 negative items your first round. Ain't no... Let me do five right now and have them pay my money next month and then do another five. No, I'm going to do everything that first month. That's the difference when it comes to, you know, traditional credit pair, uh, a lot of those companies out there and what I do as far as part of my services and as far as my increased services and credit suite process. So please do not call my phone every week. Every other day, ask me about what's going on in my process because I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to be funny. It might sound stupid. Like, Jay, you know credit. How come you don't know what's going on in my profile? Because I submitted it, and you have to wait a certain amount of time for everything to be done. 
So I have to wait the allotted time just like you do. But even still, I won't see nothing because nothing comes to my house. Nothing comes to my business address. Nothing goes to my virtual address. None of that. All communication is with the person's credit it is. And that's you. All right. Make sure that's clear. Uh, let's see. Let me say wait for about these days. Yep. Set up with Hutton and Ox. Word. Working on Ox will reopen your account. Fantastic. We can't get on our flip phones, Eric. Man, look, man. Uh, when they get those folding, we're talking about them folding smartphones, maybe. <laughs> Can't get on that app. <laughs> I appreciate this live. My plan is to leverage my credit to get the high limit credit cards with 0% promo to buy investment properties. Fantastic. Credit leverage, opportunity to be put in a better situation. Yes, ma'am. Everybody like this video as well as share. It will help this channel grow above 7K subs. I like the way you think, Chris. Chris, you my boy. My man. Honey grand. All right. But uh, but yeah, thank you all so much for your patience. I know it's been an hour and 30 minutes. I'm not going to take any more of your precious time. Your time is valuable uh, as well as my time is valuable as well. Um, I'm going to get to work. I got more applications to do as well as more headaches to go through as well as sending out some more invoices that my assistant just told me to send out. But thank you all so much. Um, y'all have a fantastic day. And uh, if you need any help, give us a call, 1-8-3-3-3-J-NOS, uh, 1-8-3-3-3-5-5-6-6-9-7. Send us an email, inquiry or inquiry at jnosecredit.com. If you want to do a super chat, you can hit a super chat button. Um, you can actually you know, put if you would like to donate um, any money towards the channel just because you like what you watched, you like the content, you like the message. Um, you like to be spoken over because some people just need to be spoken to, you know, in a different light and not just knowing that everything's okay, getting a pat on the back and all of that, you know, saying you're doing a good job, you know, people's jobs do that already, already, where they give them a pat on the back, you know what I'm saying? But really to be spoken to like, hey, you need to get your stuff together, you know? You might have one person in your family talk to you like that. You might have one cousin or one aunt who says, look, bro, sister, get your act together. Get your life together. That might be your auntie or whoever it is. <clears throat> but that's real love, man. Real love comes from, yo, not just seeing you where you are, but seeing where you could be, where you could grow to, and trying to help you get there. And a lot of folks, like I said, they just do the opposite. But like I said, if you want to... You definitely can. Uh, thank you for everybody who's 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 ever donated to my channel. Thank you for everybody who's ever, you know, um, spent money just for me to answer a question. Well, that was one ninety nine or twenty dollars. You know, what I'm saying no matter what that was, I do appreciate that. Um, I'm glad I'm able to even uh, do this and be here. I'm just, I'm happy to be alive. Like I'm I'm so happy to be breathing, to be in my right mind. Because a lot of people are double-minded. A lot of people are crazy mentally. And it's not their fault. It's just, just the way their, their life happened. You know what I'm saying? But I am so lucky to be able to even do a video, to be able to speak properly, to not be mute, to not have a breathing machine. You know what I'm saying? Just be able to be able to see different colors, not be colorblind. Um, to be able to walk upright and not being a wheelchair crawl on the floor. Like, I have so much opportunities ahead of me. A lot of you all do as well. And some of you all might have some what they call disabilities, um, that you're not able to do certain things. But think about all the things that you can do. Think about all the things that you can. I mean, you can literally get online and click a button and learn something. You can get online and click a button and be entertained. You know, some people can't even do that. They can't even see. You know, um, but yeah, just uh, just know what blessings you have. Um, appreciate those blessings and don't take them for granted. Don't sit here and, you know, complain about your life to people who really don't care. 
Um, don't sit here and spend all of your time scrolling through Instagram just to like pictures, scrolling through Facebook just to find some self-worth and trying to find the right camera angle for your pictures and all that. And that's how your whole day is spent, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, check account. Check account? What you mean? Check account. What's that? Check systems? Is that what you mean? Need help with getting a checking account? Roderick? Try to understand your question, bro. Because uh, I do do check systems removals. I'm just speaking because I, I, I don't see another post from you yet. But I do do check systems removals if you want to get that. Um, I get that service. Uh, that service is 700 bucks. You can sign up for that and get that removed off your report. That way you can go and apply for a bank. There's a, it's, it's a process you have to go through, uh, but it definitely works. And so, um, if you want that process, you can definitely call the number you see above there that actually is posted. That's my moderator. Uh, you see my phone number there. Send me, give me a call or text or email that inquiry, inquiry right there at jnosecredit.com. Or you can also send me a direct message on Instagram at jnosecredit as well. And um, you know I can help you get started with that if you want to get that service. All right. But, yeah, thank you all. Thank you all for watching. You have a fantastic day. It's your favorite guy in the hoodie, jnosecredit. Signing out.